Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rolene Marks with the Israel Brief, bringing you those top stories from Israel and surrounds every Monday to Thursday. And uh, just a reminder, we're brought to you by Lay of the Land. And at the end of this broadcast, I will tell you where to find us. But right now, let's take a look at the top story. And President Zelensky and his administration, Israel, Yad Vashem, Jewish leaders around the world, global leaders including Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the United Kingdom's ambassador to Ukraine, Melinda Simmons, as well as many, many others, have condemned the strike by Russia on a transformer tower next to the Babiya. Babiya on the outskirts of the city of Kiev is the largest grave site from the Holocaust. It was the site where over 30,000 Jews were systematically slaughtered by Nazi forces. Now yesterday the Russian military struck the tower and it caused damage to the Babiya site. And as soon as this happened, members of the Ukrainian administration came out in condemnation of this, also reiterating the fact that Vladimir Putin had said that his invasion of Ukraine was to denazify the country. As you can imagine, this is extremely painful, not just for Jews around the world, but for Holocaust survivors and, and the victims of Nazi atrocities. Israel's uh, Foreign Minister Yair Lapid condemned the attack, saying that it damaged the sacred site and said that as soon as it is possible, Israel will help to fix the site. Earlier today, President Zelensky took to the airwaves to appeal to global jury, saying it is a global jury that needs to speak out. He said Nazism was born in silence. Now, in other news, Israel joins 94 countries around the world on a resolution at the United Nations General Assembly condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Israel has also opened up a field hospital on the border between Moldova and Ukraine and are currently helping evacuees and refugees. What is quite um, interesting is to see the people from the different countries that Israel is able to help. Yesterday, a Moroccan national took to social media saying nobody is going in to help us except for Israel. And uh, a, a civilian from Gaza managed to find safety with the United Hatzalah medical team in Moldova, who then were able to extricate him to safety. Meanwhile, Israel has also dispatched its foreign in its former sorry envoy to the Ukraine to help with rescue and relief efforts. In other news, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is on his first visit to the state of Israel. He is here on a lightning quick visit. He landed last eve yesterday evening and will depart later today. Starting off his visit, he and the Prime Minister visited Israel's Holocaust and Memorial Center, Yad Vashem. And of course, given the situation with Babi Yar yesterday, this is very, very symbolic. The Chancellor and the Prime Minister toured the museum and memorial and had a memorial service afterwards. The Chancellor said that it is the duty of Germany to preserve memory and Prime Minister Bennett thanked him for his commitment saying that generations later there is not a Jew in the world that doesn't hold the pain and the memory of the Holocaust deep inside them. The two leaders also met for talks and what we do know uh, the, that came out of the talks is that Israel and Germany will strengthen bilateral cooperation and strategic cooperation holding meetings twice a year. Of course, the threat posed by a potentially nuclear Iran was also part of the discussion and uh, Prime Minister Bennett reiterating that we will not allow Iran to become nuclear, definitely not on our watch and that we are watching uh, the procedures and what is happening in Vienna. The German Chancellor also reiterated that uh, we cannot delay any decisions or any conclusions at Vienna and time is running out to ensure that a strong deal is made. 
The German Chancellor also met with Foreign Minister Yair Lapid and uh, the Foreign Minister said to him that uh, this is testament, his visit here is testament to the strong ties between our two countries. While the world is in such chaos and in such a difficult time, it really uh, speaks volumes that the German Chancellor is in Israel, albeit for a lightning visit. And our final story takes us to our Defence Minister, Benny Gantz, who says that Israel will be increasing the amount of workers coming from the Gaza Strip into Israel. The Defence Minister reiterated that this is part of Israel's plan to help improve the situation for civilians on the ground in Gaza. It is hoped that this will maintain calm and that we will not see any further firing of rockets, drones and projectiles from the Gaza Strip towards Israeli sovereign territory and civilians. It is also helped that by increasing the amount of workers that will be allowed into Israel to work, it will help with progress in bringing back the remains of Ron Shaul and Hadar Golden who fell in battle and uh, uh, Hisham al-Sayed and Avera Mingistu, two Israeli civilians who are being held captive by Hamas. The Defence Minister did reiterate that Hamas bears the responsibility for the deteriorating humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. So those are our top stories for today. Don't forget to check back in tomorrow as we bring you the final brief of the week and all those updates on Israel's response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But in the meantime, don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. We are on social media on Facebook at Lottle site. I see many of you are liking and following. Please encourage your friends to do the same. And don't forget to share our content. If you're looking for us on YouTube, you can find us at the Israel Brief and we would love it if you click that red subscribe button. Let's help get news from Israel out to as many people as possible. And of course, we're on Twitter at Lay of the Lad 5. So with the Wednesday edition of the Israel Brief, I'm Rolene Marks. Thank you for watching.